Hey guys, how are you today? Hi, I good man. How are you? Good, good. First of all, I gotta tell both of you, I was familiar with the movie, but my wife is actually like, oh, you're doing that show? That's a good show. She really likes it. She was a fan. And I binged two seasons of it, and I love it. It's really good. A big part of that is you guys. Uh, Ron K, I want to start with you a little bit. This is a great role, and I believe Alicia Silverstone played the same character in the film. What did you base your character on, and how did you approach this, Jack? I approached my Jack from the... It's actually inspired from the relationship I have with my little brother. Me and my little brother are really, really close. He's nine years younger than me, um, and he's the person that's basically always guided my um, social compass in terms of whether I'm cool or not, right? <laughs> <laughs> and um, he read all the books and stuff. And for me, when the part came up, I was just like, great, a, a job. And I'll, you know, do it to the best of my ability. But when I told my little brother, that's when I realized, oh, OK, this is something that I really need to, you know, there's a lot of people that are invested in these characters and these people. So my little brother was definitely my um, guide. <laughs> through this and my relationship with him inspired my relationship with Alex and the relationship Jack has with Tom too. Oh, that's kind of lovely. That's really lovely. Uh, Brian, <laughs> I want I want to jump in with you. I, you're really great in this character. This is a really lovely character. Um, it's, it's hard to play the sidekick or the best friend because you don't necessarily get the stuff to do it, but you there's a lot of stuff here that, what was it like for you kind of creating this role and working with these guys? Oh, first of all, thank you for saying that. It's really lovely. Um, Welcome. I think you're right. Sidekick is a is a interesting place to to walk because uh, you're not the focus, but you're the support, and you've got to be able to support the the character through every kind of madness that's thrown at them. And I think what was really lovely is it, it sort of felt like that in the three of us as well. In in Ronks, Otto, and me, we were very much each other's support just to get through such a like arduous shooting schedule, um, six months nonstop, especially for Otto, because that yeah. boy was working hard uh, every day in from the top. He was the only actor that I've ever worked with that was working crew hours almost. Like oh the only that yeah. it was the get in and the get out were the only things that Otto wasn't there for. He was working tirelessly. So it was really lovely to have a script that lends itself to Tom being Alex's support and then to be working in an environment where we are all each other's support as well. So I think that's what made it so easy to, to play the role is it was very similar to what we were all doing outside of work. So when the cameras were rolling, they just sort of picked up on what was naturally there, which is nice. really lovely. Yeah, no, it, it's, it's, it's instant chemistry. I mean, the first time I started watching the first season even, I was like, oh, well, they, they, they got their shit together <laughs> with this cast. Right. Uh, Ronka, I, I want to talk a little bit about uh, the, you know, this is a type of character that you're really getting to grow in season two. This is a uh, you get a lot more to do with this season. What was that like for you? And how did how was your reaction when you read the script, saw that you were kind of moving into a very different territory? I guess when I got the scripts, I was very, very like, yes, because I as an storyteller like having a lot to chew on you know I mean there are times where you get parts where you don't have a lot to chew on and you're just like this is fine I'll have fun but like I really seeing the script I was like great let's see what Jack gets up to let's understand her motives her desires her her fears and stuff like that and that's just such a privilege as a storyteller to be able to offer up a version like we did in season one which is very much the maternal, this person is the home, she will always be there to return to. Whereas when we transition to season two, she's like, I'm on the way to do something. I've got stuff to do. Like we, you have to be in school because that's as far as her brain can go at the time. You need to, you know, she's trying to actually put people and situations in places that are at least controllable. But he's a spy and his best friends encourage him to do spy i was about to swear spy stuff it's hard to control any of oh, that oh you can you do know? it on my you can do it you're fine <laughs> i can swear listen once i start that's it james <laughs> i'm blinding the whole way 
<laughs> that that's what it's all about swearing, man. I'm all good with that. <laughs> I love a good swear word. It adds like spice to me. It adds decoration. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I and uh, one of the things I, I, I again I have to go with the uh I'm gonna go jump back to you, Braddock. Uh this is a, a really interesting character change for you too, because you're you have a new relationship with Marley. And it's and the, which is oh I mean, first of all, she's amazing, so I'm sure that's really easy to get behind, but what what has that been like in kind of finding that kind of connection? That was a really interesting one because like with two completely different worlds that the only tie is Alex. Um, so to work with Marley just as Marley is a joy. I, I got to know her very well during series one, just as a mate. And I was dying for her to come back on series two and for us to actually interact. So when those scenes came about, it was it was a, a massive privilege. But there were discussions about whether it was a whether it was a romantic tension sort of dynamic. And I think we agreed very early on that that we've seen that play out before. We all know where it's going. And if there's no payoff in the script, it's not worth it. So it's a lot more interesting to see two people fight over friendship of the one person that they really need to survive like tom needs alex to give him some semblance of like what life was before ian died and what went on there and kyra's lost her parents kyra's been through that school for years or months or however long she was in point blank and the only tie to the life before now is alex so for both of us to need a man so desperately and for us to come to blows over that, but eventually work things out and put Alex's best interests at heart. I feel like that's the most interesting way that those two characters could have met. And yeah, figuring that out with Marley was a joy. Well, it was just, that was charming just the way you described it. So <laughs> yeah, I want to really quickly, we have just have a couple minutes left, but I want to talk a little bit about what you guys would like with, if you hopefully will get a season three, I'd love to see a continuation of these characters. Where would you guys like to go? If you go move on, Brennick, you're on screen. So let's start with you. I'm, I'm going to say, I'd like to see us all catch a break. <laughs> <laughs> I think we go for a whole eight episodes of seeing Alex sunning himself on a beach and going, weren't those two years tough? God, it's so nice to be a normal school kid again. <laughs> That's what we all need. What we all need. <laughs> you rock. That's great. You know what? Beach sounds great. So I think I'm going to have to jump on the back of that with Bren and go, yeah, a couple of seasons where we literally just drink cocktails, mocktails, because they're underage. They're course, 16 course. in the show. And um, yeah, no spy stuff happens. Everyone's just chill. <laughs> You know, it's funny. Spies can come along too. Spies can come on holiday, but like, don't be involving us in any missions this time. Just have a mimosa, no, no. Mrs. Jones. <laughs> well, the, it's so funny you say that, dude, because a lot after the season two ended, I was like, God, these people need a break. Jesus, this just happened. <laughs> Literally. It's all they're after. It's just at least five minutes to have a cup of tea. If not a beach, just let us have a cup of tea before the world turns again, please. Well, guys, we got to wrap up. You guys are amazing. I'm such a fan. Such a fan of all you guys. Cheers. Really appreciate it. Love you, oh, chat. Thanks, guys. Thanks so Cheers, much. Cheers, guys. Hopefully for next season, I'll see you again. <laughs> yeah. Cheers. See you later. Yeah. Bye. <laughs>